So health, I believe, comes from a multifaceted um, approach. And I, I think that a lot of people look at health in a very objective, clinical, scientific way and say, you know, oh, health is this. And, you know, it's whatever markers they choose. You know, it's your LDL, it's your triglycerides, it's your hormonal levels, something like that. I think a lot of people, you know, blood glucose, you know, people say, what is health? You know, a low C reactive protein. I don't think so. Um, and I know that kind of flies in the face of things, um, especially because, you know, like I, I was pre-med, so I was brainwashed for a while into thinking that markers like that were the most important thing. Um, but now I don't believe that anymore. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, I have known people who have insanely high LDL levels. I mean, people that have 400 to 500 um, LDL, and they feel fine. And then they don't have heart attacks. And they're, they're doing quite well. Sometimes I think we get too hung up on the numbers. Um, so, you know, there was a, a study um, where they found that the question was, does, does stress um, kill, basically, is what they were asking. You know, do, is, is stress bad for you? And the answer is yes. Stress is bad for you. Um, but get a load of this. This is what they found in the study that was really interesting, is that um, stress is bad for you if you believe that stress is bad for you, but for the people who didn't believe that stress was bad for them, even if they had high stress levels, but didn't think that stress was bad for them, they were just as fine as the people that had low stress. Ooh, interesting. Mind-body connection a little bit. Um, Dr. Sarno wrote about this. Uh, if you have a chance, read his books. They're fantastic. But I really feel like there's a mind-body connection. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm heading somewhere really kind of dark and deep with this. Um, but I read Mike Mahler's book, and I just want to say how much I love uh, Mike. Uh, it, he's incredible. Absolutely incredible. The, the book was so honest. And you don't have that anymore. People are not honest anymore. Very few people are honest, you know. Um, I have I make a point to meet as many different uh, coaches and gurus and experts as possible. Uh, and one of the sad things I've realized is that most of them aren't who they pretend to be. You know, who they who they claim to be online, who they claim to be professionally is not who they actually are in in actuality. Like when you meet this person um, on a personal level, they're they're not the person they're pretending to be. Um, very rarely, though, you get lucky and you run into someone who truly is exactly as they say they are. Um, and they're always wonderful people. They're really wonderful people. Like Dan John. Dan John, one of the most amazing people I've ever met. He was exactly as I thought he was. I read his books, and when I met Dan John, it was like, wow, like you really are exactly as you are in your book. And it was such a relief to me because I would have been devastated if my idol um, turned out to be a fake. He's not. He's he's absolutely wonderful. Um, Elliot Hulse, another one. You know, I had been watching Elliot's um, YouTube videos and stuff like that. When I met Elliot, I was like, wow, he really is who he claims to be. It's not just an act. He's not putting on a front. It's not fake. He really is an amazing person. He's a really nice person. He's really down to earth. Um, you know, there are people out there that you will run into who they have a personality online and then when you meet them in, in person, they suck. They're an asshole. And I found that um, really discouraging with like pro athletes. Um, unfortunately, I have way too much experience with pro athletes from um, years of playing hockey and having to deal with pros that would come into the rink or um, I train over at the UPMC um, indoor training complex is the, their sports complex um, and so there are many many pro athletes that come through there these guys look really really nice on TV they give their interviews they're super friendly they're smiling hey you know hi I'm Heinz Ward I'm real happy and then when you meet them in person it was like hmm. I don't even want to say he's a bad person. He just isn't. He doesn't live up to the personality that he puts on TV. And I, I'm not picking on Heinz. Um, I mean, I, they, you pick any number of uh, you know pro athletes and personalities. Whenever I saw them on TV, I was like, "Wow, that guy's so cool! I, I wish I could meet him. I wish I knew that guy in person." And then when I met him in person, it was like, "He's just a person. You know, he's not anything special." 
So, and that's okay. You have every right to be a person. You should be a person. Um, it's just that sometimes these people seem larger than life. So, uh, Mike Mahler is one of those people that is exactly who he says he is. He's amazing. And um, in his book, Live Life Aggressively, he talks about his past. And this is where I'm headed with this whole health thing. Mike talks about how his health was bad for years and years and years and years and years until he finally addressed this inner struggle that he was having. You see, Mike had been sexually abused as a child and molested. And although it wasn't something like he didn't sit around thinking about it like 24-7, it was this underlying stress that stayed inside of him for years. And, you know, I think a lot of us have had, um, well, maybe I shouldn't assume, but um, myself even, I've had some, some really bad experiences um, through my childhood and things like that, that I definitely had to bring to the forefront and accept that it happened. That's, that's actually one of the hardest parts is uh, you spent so many years telling yourself to block it out and it's it's like that uh, uh, crap I can't think of the name of it someone will probably put it in the comments um, but basically you have a, a paradox if I told you don't think of an elephant the first thing you would do is think of an elephant if I told you don't think about a white bear you would immediately think of white bears the thing is it, whenever you tell yourself don't think about polar bears your brain immediately searches for her polar bears to find those images and then try to get rid of them but the thing is you whether or not you mean to you're gonna search for them so if I tell you you know what when you tell yourself block out that experience whenever you're molested it ends up just replaying it's just it's just on recycle because every time you try to block it out your brain finds that experience again so one of the things people need to do is they need to bring it to the forefront accept that it happened and then you need to let go of it you need to realize hey this is something that happened in the past it's not who I am it doesn't shape who I am it's just something that happened um, and it, it doesn't make me a bad person it doesn't make me a good person it doesn't change me in any way shape or form it's just something that happened and I can let go of it and move on and I feel like that's part of health like mental health, and I don't mean mental health like you're crazy, you're not crazy, but I mean, I just mean mental health, like mental well-being, being balanced and centered is um, just as important as being physically healthy because if you're emotionally a wreck or mentally a wreck, it's really hard to be physically healthy. Um, you know, there have been times in my life where I was under extreme stress. I mean, to the point where I was at, like on the verge of a nervous breakdown just trying to, to hold on to everything. And it, even if my diet was dialed in and I was eating exactly what I should be eating, and even if I was forcing myself to go to the gym and do my workout, and even if I was forcing myself to get the sleep I needed, and if I was forcing myself to take care of myself, the fact that I was so stressed out overshadowed everything else that I did. And it's funny because, like, I'll give you a perfect example. This is a, a great example. So everyone loves falling in love. It's really fun. Um, and I fell in love with this girl um, the summer between my sophomore and junior year. And the thing is, I I did, like, jack shit. I mean, I ate fucking donuts for breakfast. And I would just, like, have, like, fast food every single day, we go out and get pizza, um, it didn't matter to me at all, I just ate junk, I mean, and like we would, actually me and this girl even, we would go, we'd go grab like fucking burgers at Burger King every day, um, or Wendy's or some shit like that, and we ate absolute fucking garbage, and she was thin and, you know, fit looking, and, and I had six pack abs, and I looked great, and it was like, I barely fucking work out, and I eat garbage, and I, I look good, and I feel good, um, and I think the reason is because mentally, emotionally, I felt so good, I was healthy, you know, I was healthy because mentally and emotionally, I was, I was so, I, I was healthy, I felt great, so it didn't matter that I was, you know, eating 
Vaselli's pizza every night and, you know, Burger King every afternoon and eating donuts for breakfast. Um, and it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter that I was, I was pounding copious amounts of alcohol because that's what you do when you're in college on the weekends. You try to blow off some steam, um, and be cool. So, you know, um, that's one of those things where it's, it's kind of funny because you can see really quickly how my mental state, my emotional state, drove my health state. Um, whereas there have been other points in my life where even though I was eating an amazingly strict diet, I mean, I was so dialed in that I had like my notebooks and I, I made, measured all my food in like grams and I had everything weighed and measured and planned and nutrient timing. I ate exactly the same time every day. You know, I'd finish my workout, immediately eat my meal. You know, two hours later, boom, I'd eat my next meal. I had everything all dialed in. Um, I even scheduled my sleep. I was like, hey, it's 9.30. I need to make sure I'm in bed by 10. Boom, you know, and dialed it in. Just absolutely dialed in. Um, but because my mental state, my emotional state wasn't balanced, wasn't centered, my health sucked. You know, because I was, I, was a, I was a ball of stress. So, yeah, never underestimate those things. Um, if you're dealing with something and you can't deal with it on your own, get some help, you know. Um, I highly recommend that you read Mike's book, Live Life Progressively. It's one of the best books I've ever read um, in, it, on many, many levels. Um, it even changed the way that I do business. Because Mike talks about, you know, um, starting his own business and why he started his own business and, you know, how he approached that, how he found his passion in life, how he found what he was meant to be doing. Um, and I don't want to get, like, cheesy and, like, jump onto, like, one of those things like, you know, find the secret or, like, you know, your one thing. Um, but those kind of actually have some validity. I actually do believe in those things. I, th I think a lot of times if you find your one thing, you're going to be good at it because you're passionate about it. You love it. So you're going to put the work in to be good at it. Because um, think about it. If if you hate playing guitar, you're not going to be a very good guitarist. But if you love playing guitar, then you're going to love practicing for six to eight hours a day. So you're going to be good at it just because you like doing it so much. You know, I did the same thing when I played hockey. I loved playing hockey so much that in the summers when I was out of school, I'd be playing six to eight hours a day easily. And I just loved it. So, of course, I got good at it because... The more I did it, the better I got at it. So, anyways, point is, mental, emotional, needs to be balanced, centered, before physical can take its place. You have to change what's in here before you can change what's out here.